All right, all right. Shalom, shalom, everybody. Once again, it is your brew. That is me, Bon Shemayim, back with another one. <laughs> In today's video, it's going to be called, um, let's get it, Not Matching Energy. I'm sure y'all know what that means. Not Matching Energy versus Checking versus Teaching, right? Because there's different ways you could go about dealing with people or that we're supposed to go about dealing with people. And the Bible instructs us on how to do that. So without it, uh, further ado, let's get into it. Uh, my rib actually gave me this first scripture. We talked about it earlier. So let's get into it. This is a uh, Proverbs 24 verses 4 through 5, right? Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Right, so let's go to this word folly. A stupid fellow. So answer not a stupid fellow according to his folly. Let's go. Uh, matter of fact, I'm sorry about this, y'all. What is folly? Folly is 200. Okay. Okay. So I had to grab this, go up, or go back, and hit 200. Boom, boom, boom. Wait, hold on. That wasn't right. That was definitely not right. It say 200 dots. So should I put the dot? Let me try with the dot. Uh, it said there's no words for this. Let me go to X. Let me go back. Okay. So this. According to his folly. It's got a word. Why isn't it in here? Evilis. Evalis. Evale. Evale. It's probably what it would have been. Let me see. Okay. Let, anyways, let's just go through it. Answer not a fool, right? A stupid fellow according to his folly. Lest thou also be like unto him, right? So if a person come up to you and be like, yo, whatever they say, a bad thing uh, towards you, don't respond back, right? Answer not a fool according to his folly. So don't give them the same energy. So that was that first one. Not matching energy. You don't have to match people energy. Somebody could be having a bad day. You don't know what's going on in their life. And they don't know what's going on in yours. And that's fair. But if you got the ability, like it says, which is much uh, lieth in you, have peace with all men. So if you got the ability, just make the peace. Answer not a fool, a stupid fellow, a dullard, a fool. So a person with no knowledge, a person who lacks under uh, any type of knowledge, right? Answer not a fool according to his folly. Right, because his folly could be violence, yelling, anger. You don't want to answer according to his folly. Lest, wait, lest thou also be like unto him, right? But then it says, answer a fool, right? So it said, answer not, but then it says at five, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. So why would you say that? That is the checking him. So now this person is foolish, but what they're uh, foolish about you're wiser about right so it's like unless he be wise in his own conceit so unless they think they're wise and not recognize that they don't understand what they're talking about and they're foolish about the subject right answer the fool according to his folly lest he be wise in his own conceit so right so answer not a fool according to his folly so there's a certain way when a person coming at you that that's when you do that hey, i'm not matching your energy right 
because you don't want to be like unto him. You don't want to become like the person that you're not trying to match their energy. You don't want to be like them, right? And then when it says, answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit, right? This is saying, look, now you got to check him. You got to let him know, listen, what you think you know, you don't know. And remember, how did the Bible say to check a person? Prove all things with the word, right? So you prove all things with the word. So that's how you check them. You answer a person according to his folly. You get back on them and you let the word hit them. That's where some of the brews call that uh, cutting, right? I'm going to slice you up. I'm going to cut you, right, <laughs> with this word. That's how that's used. Now let's get into the next scripture, which is uh, 2 Timothy 2. And we got, we're going to start at 8, right? It says, Remember that Yeshua Masiach of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to the gospel, right? Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, right? So it says, Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer. So people calling me an evildoer or a criminal, even unto bonds. So even I've been locked up, I've been going through it, right? Even unto bonds. But the word is God is not bound, right? So even if I'm locked up, the word of God is not bound. When I'm speaking the word, it's going to come because the word of God can't be bound, right? So they, like, uh, for instance, John, uh, the revelator, the, the one who wrote Revelations, he was locked up on Pathos Island. They locked him on Pathos Island because every time they put him in prison for ministering about Christ or anything he was doing, you know, back then they just found anything they did wrong to try to lock him up. It's kind of re reminiscent of today, right? But uh, uh, at a different level. But anyways, trying to lock him up. They locked John the Pathos, John up in, the, in prison. And John converted the whole prison. <laughs> he converted the whole prison. So the word of God wasn't bound by them locking. So they could put him in chains. It wasn't bound by his chains. He could still speak the word in chains through being in prison, right? Where... Wherein I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even unto bond. So even unto uh, imprisonment. But the word of God is not bound. You can't stop me from talking about this word of God. You can't stop the word of God from being spread. Like Christ says, in this, in this gospel will be spread to the four corners of the earth. And then the end shall come, right? It says, therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake. So everything I'm going through, I'm going through for the people that God are going to save sake, right? By God's favorite people. Everything I'm doing and enduring, this is what he's saying. I'm doing it for God's people. That they may also obtain salvation, which is in Christ Jesus or, Yesh or uh, Masiach Yeshaya, with eternal glory, right? <laughs> So therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain salvation, which is in Wamasiach Yeshaya with eternal glory, right? It is a faithful saying. For if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. So he's saying if you're killing yourself, if you're dead to yourself, then you're going to be living with him, right? So that means you're going to experience what he experienced, the hatred, the people going against you. That's what it's saying. If you're dead in him, then you're going to experience, you're going to live in him, right? It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, right, to die with, so we died with Christ, we shall also live with him. Now, we know that that's at the end of life, but he was breaking it down now as a saying to break it down for them like if we die with them then we're gonna live with them meaning we the here saying meaning we're gonna suffer what they suffered how are we gonna go into it if we suffer right because he suffered our savior suffered so it's saying if we suffer we shall also reign with him right if we deny him he will also deny us remember the bible says that there will be many who come in the name of Christ and deceive many. So this is about the true Yeshua Wamasiach, right? The one that the world denies. It says, if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. 
if we believe not yet he ab yet abideth faithful so like we didn't believe disbelief we didn't have faith yet we stayed in the truth and abided in the truth he cannot deny himself because he we followed what god told what christ told us to do and he told us to do what god wanted so we followed the order that he said therefore he, he says he cannot deny himself right <clears throat> and then it says of these things put them in remembrance charging them before the lord that they strive not about words right strive means that they strive so we know that from the last definition strive was fight so they're not fighting about words to no profit notice it said to no profit they're not they're not uh, disputing over the law like they did in in acts about the gentiles it's like they're not disputing about uh, about the law you get what i'm saying it says charging them before the lord that they strive not about words to no profit but to subverting the hearers right so they're striving together to figure out what's the right way to go about subverting the hearers right overthrowing bringing them in bringing them into the fold all the hearers it says study to show thyself approved unto god that's right so don't just talk about it study it to show thyself approved unto god not unto man but unto god there's always an order but you want to make sure you approved unto god you're going to follow the person that you're under in the order, but you definitely want to make sure you're approved of by God, right? A workman that needeth not be ashamed, right? So be a workman, a person who works, right? A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You don't need to be ashamed because you study to know you're doing the right thing. Not a, I believe, but I know I've studied. Uh, my, what my elder said is not in the law right with them you get what i'm saying don't just be like my elder said this so you know i'm gonna be this way if the law don't tell you because then it'll make you criticize and crucify somebody so i'm not saying not to follow your elders what i'm saying is be weary of what you're doing right because if your elders say that these people are evil and they're all going to hell or this is bad and this is evil and the bible doesn't say it and then you go and persecute or judge or uh, criticize people based upon the things you learn from your elder remember the bible said you will be judged off of every foul thing that come out the mouth everything that come out the tongue we will be judged for right it says uh <clears throat> let's get it <clears throat> it says study to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. Notice it said that, rightfully dividing, to cut straight, to be straightforward with the word of truth. But shun, right, I mean uh, to stand around, to uh, turn around, to avoid, right? Avoid, profane, right, permitted to be trodden or unhallowed in vain babbling empty talk things that aren't just like we went through in the other lesson plan things that aren't about god ungodly things right but shun propane profane in vain babbling for they will increase unto more ungodliness right because people will babble about something that's important to them and it might be ungodly so like oh my family is important they celebrate these days or they do these things so i'll just talk about this right but this is what it's actually saying don't because this is what brings the the provocation this is what brings the thing you're dividing to the word of truth to make sure that you are working needing not to be ashamed right but it's saying profane vain babblings or shown profane in vain babblings for they will increase unto more ungodliness what ungodliness and piety right and their word will eat as doeth a clanker now let's go to the next section which is second timothy 19 right because this is this overall he breaking down because so we went into um not matching people energy then we went into checking people because there's a time you know that you have to check satan right 
because people be Satan, even though they deny it. And they'll claim that their Satan is our God, that you sometimes we have to check them. Because it just has to be done, like he says. Otherwise, they'll go around thinking that they're wise, right? And then now we're getting into teaching versus teaching, right? So let's get it. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standing sure, having the seal, right? A signet. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So it's saying that if you're talking about Christ at all, depart from iniquity. Anything that's considered unlawful and unbad, that goes to, to you get what I'm saying? Depart from iniquity. Let's get into it. Iniquity, injustice, right? So unjustly thinking, unrighteous behavior, unrighteousness is unlawfulness. So anything that is you being unjustice, like not having justice, or remorse, or understanding, or unrighteousness, which is unlawfulness, right? Depart from it. Because now, it says, everyone that nameth the name of Christ. So it's, if you believe in him, depart from all of your iniquity, right? But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but are also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself of thee from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the sake of the master's use. So good for the useful, for the master to use, for God to use, and prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, right? But follow righteousness. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness. Youthfulness is not what you thought of when you were a youth. It's the things that you think of in general. Youth don't think five years down the road. They're not thinking 10 years down the road. They're not thinking at the end of this year. They're not thinking by the end of this season. The youth is thinking right here today. This is what makes me happy. I want candy. I want cake. So when it's saying youthful lust, lust don't always mean things that are uh, a desire, a passionate, a longing, lust, right? So it's saying flee from all the things that you, that are youthful, that a child, like it says, once again, going back to Hebrews, where it says that uh, uh, a person who uses milk, right, isn't an adult. They're not strong enough in the word or the truth where they should be on milk, I mean on meat. But they're drinking the milk. But it's like a wise person, a strong person, a person who has grown in the knowledge isn't use, drinking the milk no more. They're eating the meat, right? That's Hebrews that it was saying that in. And uh, <clears throat> so that's on that same level, right? <clears throat> because if, you, if you're on the milk, that means you're not fully understanding. If you're on the meat, that means you're you're fully into the understanding. You're a full age. Like a baby comes out sucking on his mom's breast, he on milk. And then after a year or two, he starts chewing on more solid foods. Now he's on meat. He's not of the age that he was where he had to. He could only survive off of the milk, right? <clears throat> it says, flee your youthful lust, but follow righteousness. Right? Righteousness, justice, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So do this. It says, flee your youthful lust, but follow righteousness. Right? Which is justice, faith, faith and faithfulness, charity, love and goodwill, peace. One peace, quietness, and rest with them that call upon the Lord out of a pure heart. So do this with the people. Do this with all men and to the best of your ability. But with the people who call out of the Lord on the, uh, with a pure heart, these are the people we should be gathering around. Are God's people, the people who will be poured for the harvest, not the ones that will be burned with the weeds, right? But foolish and unlearned questions avoid, right? 
but foolish dull stupid foolish and unlearned so un what is that uninstructed right so people who don't know have the knowledge or understanding foolish and uninstructed questions avoid right so people asking you foolish things or uninstructed things avoid them and that's why i'm saying this is what is given to the teachers right knowing that they do gender strife so know that when this is from camp to camp from uh, uh you know anything knowing that they gender strifes knowing that they will cause a strife they beget or bring forth a strife right a fight and the servant of the lord must not strive so a servant of the lord must not fight so he, he must not be out there you can't just beat you can't punch the word of god into somebody <laughs> it's not how you do it now you, you could the bible says don't spare your ch the rod for your child but you can't punch a grown man <laughs> you can't punch a grown man into uh the truth <laughs> that's not gonna happen right so let's go and the servant of the lord must not strive so he must not fight right but to be gentle what is gentle be to be mild see so gentle is not the definition of gentle that you would think which is soft but to be gentle which is mild mild mannered meaning you don't have to get high or low you're, you're even keel right but be gentle unto all men i don't have to allow my anger to get to you or allow my frustration to get to you and feel like it's personal because you can't get to understanding once you make something personal no understanding can be brought and at the end of the day that what we're all should be striving for what we all should be striving for is more understand understanding right the wisdom that god has left here on earth we should try to suck up all that wisdom right but be gentle unto all men which is being mild unto all men right apt to teach patient right apt to teach I mean you are always ready to teach somebody bring up the word it should be attached to your spirit to want to go deeper into the word and give more of an explanation because that spirit is a sign that it's from god when, when we simplify and want to run away with it run away from it that typically means it's from us so i just want to what sometimes we simplify things as teachers because people won't understand it when we're being too in depth so we try to simplify it but what i mean is simplifying is like when sometimes a pastor or different people get asked a question and they can't answer it instead of saying i don't know or i can't answer the question they'll try to bring up a whole nother scripture that has nothing to do with the actual thing that they were talking about and further you know it goes from one problem to the next it's like adding to the sentence right <laughs> so the last word did end with in but now it's a the at the end then it's a we and the we about right and then it just keeps going so now we're discussing each word instead of discussing what we were discussing at first which the end part right <clears throat> so let's get it it says uh, it says and he shall be a vessel unto honor right sanctified and meet for the master's use so useful to to our savior and our father right and prepared unto every good work meaning he prepared to do the good work of god and i think people confuse what they consider good with what god considers good because he considers the work that he wants to be completed before he sends judgment on the world to be done he wanted that two thousand years ago why would that change would are we different that he don't want us to put in the same work that they did it's never about the amount of people it's just the people if you get a hundred or two hundred people as a brother to salvation do you know what that does for your soul for your spirit for them to understand for them so if a hundred thousand don't listen the hundred matters more than a hundred thousand that didn't right <clears throat> so let's get back down it says but foolish and unlearned questions avoid to the teacher knowing that they do gender strives 
And the servant of the Lord must not strive. So he must not fight, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach. So always ready to teach. Patient, meaning understanding they might not get this. This might have to come back up next week, next month, two weeks down the road. Patient to be willing to hold off and rebring the information up, right? And why do you have to be patient? Check this out. In meekness, right? <clears throat> Instructing those that oppose themselves. That's why you got to be patient because they're opposing what the most high in themselves want for themselves and they don't know it. This is Satan's game. This is how Satan's battles people. So sometimes you talking to somebody, it could be the angel of that person talking to you and you didn't know that you were talking to an angel. Another time you could talk to a person, it could be the demons in that person talking to you, right? In the meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves, right? Who stand against themselves. If God pre-adventure will give them repentance to, to the acknowledging of the truth. See, it that's what happens, right? Because you being patient with people, they're going to hate you. They're going to think you evil. They're going to think you bad. They're going to think you always got stuff to say, whatever the case. But you're going to constantly be patient with them. Why? Because this is how you have hope for bringing them to repentance. If God pre-adventure will give them repentance, right? A change of mind to acknowledging, to the acknowledging of the truth that they were wrong. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil right slanderous accusing falsely that's what the diablos the definition of it is breaking down as slanderous accusing falsely that's what satan does right and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will understand this is something i have been understanding a lot more in life and i don't think some people understand what's happening when this is happening I didn't even understand. Like, I understood because the Bible says it, but I, I didn't fully grasp the depth of this. Right? Let's go back one last time so we get that one last part. If God pre-adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. So you're doing it and being patient and doing all of this and working with the people and being patient with the people, even though what they might do might you feel like it's against God or against you even, right? And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. You're doing it that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil by acknowledging that that they needed to repent and that they weren't try following the truth and you were giving it to them. Who are taken captive by him at his will. See, that's what I've noticed. People are so on edge in the world right now. That's why people are getting shot for cutting somebody off where people are exploding on people at fast food restaurants or the people at the fast food restaurants are exploding on customers it's partially because a lot of people walk around and do things without respect without a, a, a understanding of what the other person is going through a sense of compassion like that it's crazy because people have compassion for everybody else except the ones who matter right the ones who say shit according to the bible They'll believe in everybody else except for the ones that they should. Little kids believe in all their friends, believe in everything they see on TV. They don't believe in their parents. Wives believe in their bosses and their other women friends and their aunts and their moms. They rarely believe in their husbands. These, you get what I'm saying? So it's that lack of belief that people don't have. And it's not them alone. People are being attacked by Satan, making them think evil. Look what the devil, what it says. Out of the snare of the devil. When it says the devil, look what it says. Slanderous, accusing, falsely. Meaning no facts to the matter. Nothing, nothing that's fact-based, nothing with two or more witnesses, nothing like that. You can't go to a piece of paper and say these are the facts, these are the snatch uh, stats. No, typically the accusations come just out of satan he's just mad right who are taken captive by him at will that's why so much wild stuff that's why like i say people are getting shot for pulling over in front of somebody so like you're driving down the street 
somebody is not going as fast you see them on the phone or something so you decide to get in front of them and then they pull up to you and shoot you and kill you right that's because they are taken captive by the devil like it said who are taken captive by him at his will so at many any time and trust me i understand this more than y'all could even understand because when i was younger i had a temper i used to blow up i used to get angry it's crazy because now as i gotten older and i'm a man i used to get angry because how people treated me and all these other excuses satan pretty much but now that i'm older and a man i notice if i'm excited if i start doing this and get excited people gonna think man he tripping he might be angry but the truth is this is just excitement because i'm a bigger person I'm always looked at as anything I'm doing is aggressive. I've got that my whole life, so I can understand that, right? And that's that was a personal battle I had with myself, was with my temper, my anger, and my frustration. So as a teacher, if you're teaching, you can't have that temper, anger, and frustration back. Just because somebody call you a, a, the B word, or you a bad thing, or say evil things about you, you don't... Uh, recuperate with them you don't recoup back with them you don't say it back to them you get what i'm saying like it says when we went through matching energy versus checking right you don't match their energy now if somebody is totally wrong about something oh yeah then you have to check them because they're wrong you have to uh let them know that they're wrong right but when you're teaching you don't want to be out here fighting people ain't gonna learn from you punching them in the face and understand that a lot of people are under the snare of the devil. So at any second, for no good reason, they could just start hating you or be upset about anything or get frustrated about anything. Not everybody is built to have the same back. It's people who are fully healthy, not a thing wrong with their bodies, but everything is, is a problem to them and everybody is a problem to them. And you got people who are really not healthy, bodies acting up, the system against them everybody hates them not everybody but because you know kind of like uh, our savior right a lot of people hated him or else he would not have died but he had those who loved him so you're always gonna have those who will be able to separate because even the rain falls on the just and the unjust alike even in a bad time god will send people around those bad people to do good for you right so not saying hated by everybody, but you get that where people will be hated, right? <clears throat> be hated and everything. But you understand that that's your role as a teacher. Christ was hated. That's your role is to deal with that and to not give it back because your patience could mean their salvation, their understanding. It's crazy because typically as a person who's teaching, if you're trying to teach or get into it or you have a cousin or a family member or somebody you're trying to teach to them, you have to be more patient teaching the people who should be wanting to learn the information. You would think that they would be more patient and wanting to learn or receive the information. But because of the temptations of Satan, right, we have to be more patient towards them. Let me go over that last line one more time. It says that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, right? The slanderous accusing falsely one, right? Who are taken captive by him at his will. So that means at any moment, people could just be yanked to one side or another. People can go up or down. You hear like a mental breakdowns and mental problems. I believe a lot of mental problems are spiritual. They're getting up, fed, upset, being uh, tired or whatever not tired meaning like you're sleepy but tired meaning you're sick of it you can't take anymore typically the people who are saying that they haven't took they're not taking anything they're not taking anything everybody there's so many everybody else around them is going through more than them worse than them and probably doing better it's probably light little things that they're taking but they can't handle what they're taking. Satan is beating them down. So they're not just fighting whatever they're dealing with in life. They're fighting mentally against Satan, not preserving their peace. That's why <clears throat> when people don't want to uh, gain the understanding, you be patient with them. You keep giving the understanding. Why do you keep giving the understanding? 
Because at the end of the day, when you go meet the Savior, you want God to be like, you did my job. You told him. You warned him a bunch of times. They didn't want to listen. You told him. At the end of the day, it's not about what other people think about you. Because they're going to have their own opinions. They're going to think whatever they want. And trust me, they'll make up all different type of ways to say it. They'll say God is telling them to say it to you. Or they'll say they talked to a godly man and the godly man told you this. Or they'll come up with whatever reason, right? <laughs> to say whatever they feel like they have to say to try to stop you from teaching. But you don't. You don't stop teaching. You don't stop giving the truth. You keep telling them what it is. Because at the end of the day, all you want to hear is well done. On that note, I just want to say the water. For tuning in, call out higher by Shemeshia, which is all praises to the Most High in the name of His Son. I did ramble a little bit at the end of that. I hope y'all got what I was dropping, cause I was rambling so y'all could get to drop some of these parables in for those people who I might have went over their head to simplify it, and hopefully they would get it. Uh, on that note, I just want to say Shalom. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in. And Barakatha, which just means blessing, right? Bless you. Barakatha, and into the next, until the next time. Peace out. <laughs>